Welcome to Practice Update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizullah. I'm privileged today to have Lily Shakti with me. Lily is the Administrative Director at the Johns Hopkins Breast Center and Cancer Survivorship Programs. Lily, fantastic to have you here today. Thank you for asking me. What are some innovations being done now through Johns Hopkins that will allow us to have this removal of the silos, you know, this compartmentalization effect? One of the things is that a long time ago at Hopkins, we decided to do a transverse cut of the institution. Uh -huh. So rather than looking at everyone in their silos, which is how they may be paid, for example, sure. how they may be promoted, for yes. that matter, uh, but anyone that's involved with breast cancer in doing that transverse cut, we brought together and said, we are a team and we are dependent on one another. And we had the patient join that team so that the patient is part of their own multidisciplinary care team. Absolutely. And in doing so, we've also um, added 20 years ago, the concept of having oncology nurse navigation. So in, in looking at a nurse navigator as a, really a, a hub uh, for the team, that individual has some very specific responsibilities that she and then in turn shares with the rest of the team. Not only looking at, does this patient have barriers that uh, are gonna directly impact her ability to get the treatment that she needs? Transportation is a known barrier nationally. A very large barrier that's now creeping up above transportation are financial barriers. Patients are not prepared for deductibles and co-payments, sure. missing time from work with their paycheck being short, uh, and that's a, that's a huge impact. So whatever that we can do to come up with resources and uh, alleviate some of those barriers is, is critically important. They also have a key role in educating the patient with a primary goal that the patient will be then able to participate in the decision making about their care. We should no longer be doing something to a patient, we should be doing something with the patient. And in order to do that, that patient needs to feel confident that they are in good hands and that they understand what their options are. Treatment for treatment's sake is bad care. So also taking a look at what are the goals of treatment, not from our perspective, but through the eyes of the patient. Yes. So in order to do that, one of the things that I make sure that our navigators ask about, as well as myself, is tell me your life goals before you found out that you were diagnosed with breast cancer. If this is an early stage breast cancer, commonly the patient will say, just save my life. I have a 10 year old to raise. Yes. And I'm able to respond in saying, I think your life is gonna be saved. Um, and you just told me one of your life goals is raising your 10-year-old into adulthood and, and beyond. But also tell me some of your other life goals. And people don't always think that they even have life goals, but sure. it might be getting a promotion at work. Or yes. for a young patient uh, in her 20s or 30s, it could be someone that wants to start a family mm -hmm. and doesn't know if this will totally derail it or not. So having the navigator document those life goals so that the team reads them in the electronic record in our case, uh -huh. and that everyone has to acknowledge these goals and figure out how are we going to preserve them while also treating the patient. So the navigator will arrange, arrange for fertility preservation consultation. The navigator will arrange for the patient to go to rehab, which we refer to as cancer prehab. Why do we let patients become deconditioned sure and then tell them later we will get you back to your baseline when we know that there's evidence-based measures that we can take on behalf of that patient to never let them get deconditioned. Absolutely. Something as simple as power walking mm -hmm. three times a week for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. we know will reduce or prevent fatigue. Yes. Why do we say to a patient, plan on fatigue when Absolutely. they don't have to? It's so silly. <laughs> and it's taken us this long to be able to figure out that uh, we want to preserve quality of life during treatment and have them on the back end when the treatment is done. Yes. Also have survivorship with good quality of life. 